It's loading. The, the view here is so nice. Where are you at? I'm at the Manatee Hospital. Oh, yeah. By the river. By the yeah, river. by. Go to Farmhouse Donuts and get some. Okay, donuts. three, two, one. And welcome to Coffee with the Colonel. Today it is April 17th. It is 9.02 a.m. and we are live today. That's right, live with the Colonels from SMA. Uh, welcome to all of our families, friends, and cadets. Uh, I, hope, uh, I hope if you're up, you have joined us. I hope you have a nice warm cup of coffee. Uh, and we're really excited about this episode. We're gonna be online here for a little bit and we, uh, we put out some viewers uh, uh, questions earlier this week, and we have quite a few questions already. We're going to get to those in a, in a few moments. And, uh, and then we're also going to be, uh, uh, let me tell you first about, uh, we have Angela Cohen, who is uh, the lovely and talented young lady you meet in the office whenever you come to see us. She is uh, monitoring Facebook Live. And she's our production manager. She's our cameraman. And everything. But uh, she's doing all of this, and and she is going to have a chance to uh, pose some of your new questions that you pose to Facebook Live, uh, as well as if there are some cadets out there and you want to give some shout outs to uh, some of your teachers or staff members that you miss seeing on a regular basis. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to go ahead and type that into the Facebook Live chat and, and uh, those are the kids a chance, she will give those shout outs as well. Uh, let me introduce you uh, to the panel here. You know who I am. I'm SMA Colonel Fout at the school. And also joining us, we have our ninth, 10th grade uh, assistant head of school. Uh, SMA Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Rodriguez. Hi, everybody. So happy to be here. And then we also have joining us our 11th and 12th grade assistant head of school, and that is SMA Lieutenant Colonel Williams. Hello, everyone. Good to see everybody this morning. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into some of these questions. We've got some really good questions. First, I've got a couple of questions from cadets that I wanted to uh, I wanted to address right away. Uh, the first one is from Tyra, and she's asking us, "Will we be going back to school this week?" Oh my gosh! Uh, we we miss you as much as you're missing school. Um, we know with everything that's with all the changes that are going on, with all the uncertainty, with all of the, uh, uh, the difficulties of trying to, you know, be a kid right now, it's just it's overwhelming. And not having that, uh, not being able to go to school, be surrounded by your peers, uh, this is when it really becomes evident that you don't, you don't really have um, that support group around you all the time, and it really makes it difficult. And you'll have to excuse me. My dog is whining at me to let her out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that real quick. I'll be right back. Hang on. This is the reality of working from home too. Uh, you're constantly having <coughs> those types of uh, interruptions and so forth, and you can really imagine what it's like for kids. In school, they're dedicated. They've got that 90 minutes of class. They have the teacher's attention. They have their support groups around them. Uh, they also get that, that so important socialization time, uh, lunch time between classes, even sometimes during class when they're working on group projects. Tyra, I, I get the pain. Um, I wish I could say we were going back to school right now, but uh, if you're following the current events, uh, I think it's become quite obvious that uh, that it's just not a good time for us to be in groups like that. And we really need to uh, take that seriously so that we can eventually get back to some sense of normalcy. Uh, the next question I had was from Adalia, and she asked, will the upcoming school year start in its usual month or will it start later? I'll tell you the truth. 
we really don't know what that's going to look like yet. And, and the way this uh, this uh, this whole thing is going, it's like weekly there are different guidances and different changes, and and the models change. And uh, first, you know, they thought we were going to have a hundred thousand deaths. Now we're we're not even looking to be that close, and hopefully that's because we are taking this seriously and we are social distancing. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a scientist, but that's what the scientists are saying, that mitigation is working. So we still have a long time yet to see what's going to happen at the beginning of the school year. I am certain that one way or another, we will start school next year. I don't know what it's going to exactly look like. It may be um, it may be a different way uh, of doing it. It may be some blended learning again. Who knows? Uh, we really don't know at this point. That's something we're going to have to keep an eye on and plan for throughout the summer. Um, that's a great question, Adalia. I wish I could say yes. <laughs> we are starting in August as normal. I wish I could <coughs> tell you that, but I'm afraid that uh, I don't. Ha I can't really make that statement. Um, then I had a question about uh, about a cross point for Mary. Uh, why are teachers not able to use cross point, the parent uh, portal for distance learning? Um, I, quite honestly, that was a that was guidance that was put out by our our host district, Sarasota County Schools. Um, we're still trying to get clarification from them about. Uh, about that. Um, however, if you if you read their continuance uh, of operations plan, um, they did and I'm just gonna cross a little bit into a question from uh, uh, I can't remember who the question was from, but it was a question about how how will uh, cadets be um, uh, evaluated for this quarter. Um, the contingency of operations plans say that we will not, uh, for kids who participate, they will not receive anything below 70% for the e-learning time. So if we end e-learning at, e at May 1st mm -hmm. and go back to school, then everything between spring break and May 1st will be, uh, if they participate, in 70% or higher. Uh, and it'll just be one grade. That's how that's supposed to work. If we go the entire rest of the year, then that whole block will just be one e-learning grade. It's really kind of hard to judge kids right now on meeting, mastering certain standards, et cetera, when, you, when they really don't necessarily they don't get a learning environment right now. We know that. Uh, not every kid has great access to uh, devices, to internet, to uh, and many is like even our own families. Uh, we are, are sharing devices. We are having to schedule time. We are, you know, trying to get a kind of contact with teachers to clarify instructions. And it's, uh, you know, like in my house, that's a, that's a household with a. Uh, with two highly educated parents, uh, and both of them are educators, and it's hard for us with our child. And, and I, I can't imagine um, how difficult it could be with people who don't have an education background. Uh, and plus, they may still be working if they're an essential worker out of the house, um, or if they're, or they may be furloughed, and, and then you've got all kinds of worries about. Uh, uh, coming into play about whether, you know, how we're going to put food on the table. When is my my $1,200 check coming? Uh, I can't get through to unemployment. And, and all of this plays into the educational environment for those children. And we really can't, in this emergency situation, expect what we would expect when we have them in our classrooms for 90 minutes a day for class. Um, so... Uh, we're being really flexible with that. We are following the district's um, guidance on evaluation. Um, so the e-learning um, 
The reason why they're not supposed to use Crosspoint is because they're only supposed to put in one e-learning grade at the end of the e-learning session, which will be whenever we go back to school or when the semester ends. Um, so that's, I hope that answers those two questions. Um, next, I'm going to give uh, uh, Colonel Williams a chance to talk because we have a couple questions about graduation and seniors. And uh, so I got a couple questions, several questions from Susan, uh, as well as a question from, uh, um, who else? Corey. Um, Corey's is very general. How will graduation be handled? Seniors, and will the seniors be recognized at all for their efforts and achievements over the past four years? I'm going to lump these questions together because I think you're going to be interested to hear in everything that's coming up for seniors. Uh, um, Colonel Williams and and her and the sponsors have been uh, working really hard and coming up with a good plan for this. So the other questions were: Will it be any type of graduation? Uh, how do I get the, the graduation gown and, and yearbook and stuff ordered through Jostens? Because uh, all that stuff is coming to the school. Uh, will a refund be made on an events for the uh, class of 2020 that were canceled due to the virus? So let me turn that over to uh, Colonel Williams right now. Go right ahead, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Colonel Fowl. Um, I know that the senior events and graduation and, and whatnot have been at the forefront of um, a lot of people's thoughts, uh, including mine, uh, because this is the fun time of year when seniors get... due to the park not being open is grad bash. Um, we are looking at alternatives for everything else at this point in time. Um, we have been in contact with um, the boat that the students were supposed to take for prom. We're looking at alternative dates in June for that, hoping that um, we are trying to be really optimistic that by June we can have some type of gathering. Uh, We've also been working on several different options for graduation. Uh, and actually, I will be putting together a survey and be putting that out to the seniors on their Google Classroom, as well as to senior parents within the next three or four days, uh, because we would like to get some feedback from um, your students, well, our students and, um, and the families to see, you know, what are they looking for um, in this graduation uh, ceremony, especially if uh, it cannot go forth as um, originally scheduled. So I will be sending out a survey. Looking forward to your input and insights on that. That will be going out uh, no later than Monday. So, uh, you know, make sure that you're looking for that as that comes out. And um, as far as caps and gowns and things like that, so all of the caps and gowns get delivered to the school. Um, I actually spoke with the, uh, our rep yesterday or the day before, um, actually Monday it was, but anyway, he has all of our caps and gowns. Um, his warehouse is in Orlando. Um, he is ready at um, any time that I call to um, personally deliver them to us. So no worries. the regulations are that are coming out and um, I mean so based on today we are technically supposed to go back to school May 1st so that would also play into things so um, we will look at if we do not return to school May 1st putting together a time um, where students can do a drive through can get their caps and gowns can get their yearbooks can turn in their uniforms and do all one-stop shopping um, on a date or two that, that we determine at that time. Um, we won't be doing anything <laughs> like that until after April 30th, obviously, we can stay at home order and it's still in place at this point in time. So we won't be doing anything like that until then. 
Um, but we will definitely have a celebration of these graduates. They have worked so hard and we are not gonna let this pandemic take away their achievements. So we will have something for them. I just don't know exactly what that's gonna look like at this point. And we are literally every week evaluating our situation, um, looking at our options to seeing what's gonna work best. And um, we know that everything changes so quickly. So we're just trying to have all of our moving parts work with all of the new regulations. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, Colonel Williams, uh, good update. Uh, so keep an eye out for the uh, senior parents and seniors, keep an eye out for that survey so that you can give your feedback about uh, what your preference is. Uh, next, I'd like to go to a, here's a question uh, from a freshman parent, uh, Stacy. When will cadets and parents be contacted regarding course selection for incoming freshmen? Okay, so this is from actually probably an eighth grader parent. So uh, I, I'm glad you posed that question and, and I know you can expect uh, probably phone calls and a letter within the next week uh, about uh, next steps to take. I know the uh, robocall that went out this past um, this yep. yesterday uh, was all about re-registering and that's for all students. That has to be done annually through the uh, Sarasota County School District and you should be receiving uh, an email from them and if you don't have an email uh, then you should be receiving a letter next week regarding steps for going on to that info snap and making sure that you are um, uh, set up correctly to be an SMA student for next school year. Um, but also I think that question goes into a lot about actually choosing courses and now uh, prior to, fortunately prior to school letting out all of the students that are at SMA uh, high school have already had a chance to do course selection sheets and those have primarily have pretty much all been entered and and then we're figuring out now what classes we can actually offer because we have the numbers to support it and that uh, those should be finalized within a week or so and and then we need to uh, be putting in all of the uh, there will be the uh, counselors will be contacting the uh, incoming mm -hmm. freshmen and incoming new students to get their schedule choices uh, built so that they can have a, a schedule ready for next year and then we will be able to um, we'll be able to make sure that uh, all the classes are filled and we're ready to go. Um, so uh, a lot of that is happening within the next couple of weeks. So please uh, watch out for phone calls. And since we are not at the school, they may be phone calls uh, or emails. The emails will be coming from an SMA uh, email, our SMA, uh, uh, org. Uh, but phone calls may be coming from uh, an unusual number. So please, uh, you know, it, if your voicemail is full, empty it out so that we can leave the voicemail. Um, and, and you may want to answer some of those phone calls. Okay. Uh, so, Colonel Fout, can I mention real quick? <clears throat> um, most of our 11th and 12th graders did the course request, but um, as I was working on master schedule the other day, um, I did notice that there are a lot of 10th graders that never did their course request. So if your student doesn't remember, they don't know, the best thing to do would be to contact their counselor via email and see if they actually did the course request for next year, if they you know, selected their classes and things like that, because we are missing um, 11th and 12th grade was, was pretty much on target but um, we were missing um, a good chunk of 10th graders that had never turned in their course selection sheet. So um, if your student is one of those um, and you're not sure, then I would definitely try to make contact with the counselor via email um, is probably the easiest way to get a response. So that <laughs> are, those are the current ninth graders, Colonel Williams? Yes, that would be our current ninth graders, rising 10th graders. 
And excuse me, Colonel Fowle. If you could please uh, talk to our parents about who, which, which um, counselor should they contact uh, for their child? Hi, everybody. Thank you, Colonel Fowle. Thank you, Colonel Williams. Um, so if your last name is A through L, you will contact uh, your school counselor, Dr. Maria Clapp. And uh, for those of you that with last names starting with M, you will contact um, Captain Marcia Seabrake. Um, if you have any uh, doubts on how to get to the emails, you can go to the website um, or any Google Classroom. I know that some of the Google Classrooms, uh, the counselors also have a Google Classroom. If you need that code, uh, we can provide that code fully for you. And also, you can contact me if you have any doubts. Also, also just to, um, uh, I was just informed too, and I didn't realize that the, all of the course request sheets for each grade level are on the high school webpage. Mm -hmm. So um, if you need to look at those or send one in or something like that, all of those are already um, posted on the high school webpage. Uh, okay, so we've got another question here from Amy. <clears throat> My son is a freshman this year. I was curious about class fees. Do they get turned in at the end of the year or do they keep them? I know lengthwise they will not fit him and I'm not sure if they will fit, even fit going back in May. In May. Wouldn't one of you like to jump on that? Sure, I can answer. So um, normally our students, um, as long as they are planning to return to SMA, do not turn their uniforms in at the end of the year. Um, about a week or two before school starts in August, um, supply is open for them to come in and trade their uniforms out um, for a uniform that fits better, whether it's, you know, whatever the issue is. And those usually happen a week or two before we go back in August. Um, we always send a summer letter home in July, um, and it talks about those dates that you can come in to supply and trade your uniforms out. Um, obviously, this year, <laughs> we don't know, but that is typically what has happened in the past is uh, you do, as long as you're planning to return to SMA in the fall, you keep your uniform, and if it doesn't fit, um, we suggest you try it on in July. If it doesn't fit, make plans to come in when supplies open before school starts to get fitted for new new things. Uh, Dr. Rodriguez, I'm going to impose upon you a little bit to kind of uh, I do a summary of that in Spanish for our Spanish-speaking parents. Uh, so about uniforms, uh, supply, and schedules. Buenos días a todos. Eh, nuevamente la doctora Rodríguez le estoy dando un resumen de lo que acabamos de hablar eh, en cuanto al uniforme. Eh, el uniforme, los estudiantes se van a quedar con su uniforme mientras tanto eh, en agosto eh, va, eh, el lugar donde intercambiamos los, los uniformes va a estar abierto y su estudiante si creció y no le sirven los pantalones o cualquier otro cambio, usted puede hacer ese, ese cambio de uniforme en ese tiempo, o sea que no se tiene que preocupar. No tiene que devolver los uniformes ahora, eh, pero eh, cuando venga nuevamente en agosto, pues entonces eh, lo puede entregar. En cuanto a los horarios y cómo se va a ver eso para el año que viene, eh, eh, los horarios se hicieron en la escuela. Ahora hay algunos eh, estudiantes que se lo ven obrado que no pudieron hacer sus horarios para el décimo. So, la recomendación es que ustedes llamen a su consejero o que vayan al website de SMA y encuentren eso, esos cursos para entonces darse a su consejera. Ahora, si tiene dudas, vaya y llame o mande un correo electrónico a su consejero. Eh, doctora María Clark es la consejera para los estudiantes con los apellidos A a la L. Y Capitán Marcia Seagrave es la consejera para los estudiantes con los apellidos que empiezan con la letra M hasta la Z. Por ende, si usted tiene cualquier otra duda, Manda un email con correo electrónico o no, me puede llamar a mí uh, para cualquier pregunta de noveno décimo o puede llamar a, a Luciana Escuelo Williams que para los de 11 y 12. Eh, cualquier pregunta, por favor, llámenos, escríbanos. No importa la pregunta, usted hágala. Thank you 
so much. I'm actually starting to get some of that. So uh, I'm really proud to, to have Dr. Rodriguez on my team. Um, she's teaching me just because we are doing our best to make sure all of our parents and cadets uh, are able to act. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go to Angela and ask to see if we have any uh, shout outs from cadets for teachers or staff members, or if we have any uh, additional questions or clarif clarifying questions. Angela? Yes, hi. Thank you, Colonel Falk. Good morning. We do have a shout out from Captain P. She... Can you hear me? She's on mute. I'm on the road. I'm a mission. Can you hear me okay? She also has uh, five children at home, so she might be a little busy. I'm sure everybody <laughs> understands what she's going through. Definitely. Can you, uh, can you guys hear me? All right. So uh, it looks like I'm having some... Can you hear me okay? I can hear you good. <clears throat> Thank you, Colonel Fell. Good morning, everybody. And yes, it is very busy here in this uh, the Cohen household. Um, but we do have a shout out from Captain P, uh, Captain Pellegrino. She misses all of her cadets and says a big hello and, and can't wait to see all of you soon. I do have a question um, from Jessica regarding uh, graduation that I believe Colonel Williams um, had answered. Um, Andrew is wondering if there's um, any availability for a personal trainer or a video exercise program. Excellent. Great questions. And uh, you know what, Andrew, that's a good question. I don't know if you saw last week's uh, Coffee with Colonel. Uh, of course, that was... Uh, um, really a display of how to hurt an old man um, and, and <laughs> did a great job of that uh, that is actually available on our website if you want to see that uh, but also uh, please take the time to uh, you know what even if you don't have coach Ely or if you don't have command sergeant major Thomas shoot them an email and they will they will send you some some uh, great workout videos, personal training videos. Uh, they may even get on with you live like we are right now and, and work you out through a, through a, a program because I tell you what, um, all, all of our staff are so anxious to be with you all again and to have that interaction that they would love to have that opportunity. So Andrew, please do that. Um, of course, you can always go to that uh, coffee with the Colonel from last week. It is on the high school webpage and watch that video again. It's also on Facebook. Um, and that was a very effective 13 and a half minute workout. Uh, <laughs> All right, <laughs> All right, Angela, any other questions? Yes, we have one more from Catherine. She um, has noticed that the senior leadership packets are on the website um, for access, but um, is questioning junior leadership and those positions and how to apply for those. That is a great question. And actually, I don't have an answer to that at this moment. However, I will get that answer for you. And if they have, uh, if they're doing it the same way with uh, packets and applications, I think I'll make sure they get that up on the website soon. Uh, go ahead, Colonel Williams. Um, I just heard from, um, Sergeant P, who said he was working on an answer for us about junior leadership positions. So maybe here, before we get finished, we'll have an answer about that. There you go. All right. This is a, this live, people. This is right now. <laughs> I just wanted uh, to add something about applications and deadlines. I know some students have been calling um, and emailing me about National Honor Society. And I uh, just wanted to reassure those students that um, we're doing their application and submitting that not to worry deadlines, you know, have been extended. We don't know uh, when we're going back to school, but I know um, Major Wasserman um, had uh, told them and told the school that when the school uh, goes, when we go back in session, then we'll uh, have another extension to that application. Excellent, excellent. 
so so the opportunities are still going to be there for you you're not missing it i know there's a lot of kids worry you know uh majority of our kids are planning to go on to uh post-secondary education and they're worried about things like the sat and the ACT and stuff like that and i get that uh let me just uh give you a little update on the last uh, communication I got from College Board was that they are actually looking at the possibility of having a homebound SAT test in the fall if we are not able to have on-site testing. So please know that that everybody is working to adapt to this uh, to what's going on and to meet the needs of all of our kids. And, and we're going to make sure you have that information as soon as we get. Uh, anything else, Angela? Uh, that is it for right now. Um, Amy did ask about the SATs. Her son's uh, was rescheduled. And I think you just answered it as well as going online directly to the SAT. Yeah, Web so you can always check the College Board website. Um, and I do know that most colleges, uh, like if, you're, if your kid is a, is a uh, senior right now and was wanting to, uh, wanting to retake the SAT or the ACT, I know that most colleges are, are, are taking kids just uh, based on their high school transcripts right now because they didn't have a chance to get their, uh, to get their SAT or their ACT test. Um, so the colleges are making accommodations as well. And uh, of course, I want you to know that a lot of colleges right now are completely online. Uh, I would highly suggest you reach out to your college of choice and ask them those questions. Uh, go ahead, Colonel Williams. Um, so <clears throat> I think there was a question about community service on there, and I'm not sure that we addressed that. So for, um, for this year, if your student is a senior and they do not have their 75 hours of community service, SMA is waiving that requirement for this school year. However, if your student is planning to try to receive the Bright Future Scholarship, as far as I know, they are still requiring the community service hours. So um, there's a little bit of a difference in what SMA requires versus Bright Future. So just make sure that you understand the difference in that. If you have questions, of course, feel free to email me or the counselor or something like that. But I think the question was, what do we do with community service hours or something yeah, like that? Yeah, so question from Mary, how do cadets submit their volunteer hours they have for the school year? Thank you, Mary. So, um, there, normally what they would do is uh, fill out, the registrar has a log that the student um, fill out and they turn in. Uh, she likes them to turn them in about at least 20 hours at a time, not you know two hours here, two hours there and, and whatnot. I can see if we can get that posted online, but if your student is not a senior, they can keep track of things on the log and just turn it in when we do return to school. So um, no harm, no foul if it's a little bit later when we get back. Obviously, we know we have extenuating circumstances. So just make sure that they are keeping track of those things. And then we can turn them in when we do return to school if your student is not a graduating senior. So I would also recommend um, if you do um, need to submit hours this year before the school year is out, that not only uh, do you send those, um, you'll have to probably scan or take a picture of and send uh, to um, our, or to the um, SMA registrar at oursma.org. And, uh, but you should also CC your JRTC instructor uh, because you want those on to the uh, JRTC site as well. Uh, because that, that helps with your promotion points. And uh, we need to continue working towards, you know, that growth and leadership. And uh, that's a key point for, um, for promotion. Uh, Angela, do we have any other additional questions? Um, at this point, at this time, we do not. Okay, well, uh, you know what, we've actually uh, 
So I don't have an un, uh, an official answer about junior leadership. Um, what I do have, oh, I've got the three bubbles that look like someone's about to tell me what the official answer is. Um, but my first um, guidance would be that students that are interested in junior leadership need to contact their current um, JRO TC instructor via email, however you communicate with them, Google Classroom, and express your interest in junior leadership and then they can tell you um, what you need to do going forward. Uh, it sounds like there's been quite a few packets already turned in. So, but um, if, you know, we're still kind of, again, trying to work this out <laughs> in these uncharted waters. Um, so if you do have someone that's interested in junior leadership, please make sure that they contact their JRTC instructor ASAP so that I, I don't have an official deadline, um, so please make sure that they do that today to make sure that they don't miss out on an opportunity. All right, so we uh, we were planning to do this for about 45 minutes. We're at 37 minutes right now. So right now, I want to I want to start with Angela and give each of my panel uh, an opportunity to say a few closing thoughts. Uh, to express their their um, their thanks and and to to and whatever it is that they need to express to you, the families and our cadets. Uh, Angela, you want to go first? Yes, hi, thank you, Colonel Fout. <clears throat> I do just want to wish everyone um, to hang in there. We are all in this together. We truly are. Um, it's tough being isolated. Um, and it's, as the weeks go on, it definitely, uh, gets harder and harder. I miss, miss, miss seeing all of your faces, um, parents and cadets. I, it's, it's affecting me in a tough way. Um, but I do want to take this opportunity. We do have a giving challenge coming up. Um, and we are participating. Um, it's a 24 hour give and would love to get videos from all of you, any of you, cadets, parents, grandparents on what SMA means to you. It could, it can be under a minute. Um, and just a simple YSMA. And uh, if you can send that to me, Angela.Cohen at OurSMA.org, that would be great. Um, and hang in there. And, and hopefully this will all end soon and we get to go back to our campus and see your faces. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Rodriguez. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to, uh, again, thank uh, Colonel Fout. Williams, Angela, our teachers are amazing, our leadership and admin team, the A team is amazing. I am, uh, uh, I am so grateful to be working with amazing people. And uh, I just wanted to tell our SMA family that, um, you know, we miss you. Uh, if you need us, please call us, email us, just make contact. Um, we are really here for you. Uh, we really want to make this as smooth uh, transition as possible, as pleasant as possible. Um, we pray for each and every one of you uh, to be strong. I know that right now I'm, you know, I take care of my own family, um, and uh, you know, I take care of my dad. He's right, right next to me. I'm going to uh, my next uh, appointment with him. So I, you know, there's a lot of things going on. Um, and it's, that, it's the same with you all. So again, if you need to talk, if you need support, if you need anything, if you are in doubt, just let us know, give us a call or email us. All right. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Be safe. Um, I, you know, just want to, you know, everyone's kind of taking my words, but I am just really so proud to be part of this SMA family, uh, our teachers, our admin staff, um, our support staff, um, everyone has really just come together to, um, make this very difficult situation, um, 
workable at this point in time. And uh, wow, really missing the kids right now. And ready to get back. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you, Colonel Williams, for uh, bringing me to tears. Um, yeah. So, and, and you probably noticed in my uh, in my ramblings, my colonels, uh, coffee with the colonels, my uh, my um, the evil news writings. Um, we really need to be focused on being there for each other right now. Um, I'm, I am, uh, I have to say, just like my team here, I'm blessed to be a part of the SMA family. I have been since I came here almost two years ago now. It'll be, it'll be two years on June 18th, uh, my anniversary day with SMA. Um, and, and I'm going to celebrate that day uh, for a long time to come, I'm sure. Um, I do truly miss the kids. And, 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 and I'll tell you, quite honestly, uh, I, I lose sleep at night um, all the time. And, uh, you know, I worry about um, that, you know, like uh, Josh, who would come up and talk to me eight times during lunch. And, and just to check in with me. And I miss Josh. I miss seeing him. I miss, I miss uh, seeing him come walking towards me. And it, it's, it's things like that. Um, and, and there's all kinds of kids, cadets, um, that I'm, I'm watching grow up. And, and, and we miss that a lot. Um, it's, uh, we, we didn't get into this business to sit behind a computer. Uh, we got into this business to do. Uh, to help you and, uh, and to be there for them. And uh, that's the hardest part of this right now. Um, like both of them said, please reach out to us. Um, you can our emails off the website. Mine is fred.bout at our sma.org. Um, you can, uh, you, if you call our work number and leave a message, we get those immediately on our emails. So we will call you right back um, for anything. If, if you're if you're one of those families and your your primary breadwinner is is on furlough, or or your business is shut down because it's deemed non-essential, I know it's essential to you, and that's essential to us as well. Um, if we don't have the support to help you, we will help you find the supports mm -hmm. uh, because we want all, all of our SMA families and all of our SMA cadets to be safe, healthy, and, and to come through this stronger than when it started. And, and we believe we can do that together. That's the only way we can do it. Even though we're socially distant, we are still together. And, and because that's who we are as an SMA family, uh, we are strong. We are honorable, we are respectful, we have integrity, and that means that we're always in it together as a team. Uh, we are battle buddies. Uh, that's what we do. And uh, we're here for you, and we want we want you to reach out to us. And uh, I, I could go on and on and on about this, but uh, right now I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to be with us live this morning. Um, if, if, if this was good, if you enjoyed this, please share it with your friends um, so that they can see what they missed and they can get these answers. Also, all the questions we got, we will post those questions with their answers on the website uh, by, by mid next week at the latest. And uh, so you can refer to those. If you have more questions, shoot them to us. We will consider doing a live again. Um, I think this was very beneficial. And once again, thank you so much for joining us with Coffee with the Colonel. And uh, I hope to see you again next week. Be safe. Be well. See you next week on Coffee with the Colonel. Stay healthy. Be well. Ciao. Adios. Cuídense.